discuss on how to handle physics in practicals basically on the table of results because I have realized uh, many students know how to obtain values from experiment but it writing them to the degree of address is a challenge so this is what I want to discuss today uh, these are values uh, which are given from a certain experiment we have the value of x in centimeters y in centimeters and we are required also to fill this column for x times y 1 out of x y out of x so I need you to pay maximum attention and follow this video because at the end of it you will not remain the same and you will be able to handle all the other tables you might be having in your books um, there are certain rules we follow, but before we go there, look at my table. It has to be enclosed everywhere. Don't let these lines exceed. Like you find there is excess this side, you find there is excess this side, you find there is excess. Let it be enclosed uh, the way I have it. Then you let the units, the units and the quantity. This is a quantity, this is a unit. This is a quantity, this is a unit. Let this bracket not touch the quantity, not touch the unit, and it should be indicated clearly as a bracket. Some of us have a tendency of writing it as if it is a C. Have it when it is a real bracket. Um, here I have the unit as centimeter squared because I have multiplied the two quantities that is x c times y x c is in centimeter times y which is in centimeter that's why we have centimeter squared then here we have per centimeter then here I don't have any unit reason being uh, this y is in centimeter and this x is in centimeter so mathematically since they have the same quantities, they will cancel each other, so you don't need to write anything there. Now, let me start with this. X times Y. X times Y. It means we shall be multiplying this value times the other one. But before we start writing our answers, there are rules we have to follow. Here it is a multiplication, so we have to follow the rule of multiplication. When we are multiplying the two numbers, I'll remind you, take a situation. Here we have two numbers, that is 11.60 times 7.3. So when you look at this, these two numbers, this is having three significant figures. This number here is having three significant figures. Looking at this one is having two significant figures. Because the answer for this will have two significant figures, but not three. Why? It's a rule. When we are multiplying two numbers in physics practicals, the final answer is written to the uh, few significant figures like one of the other two numbers being multiplied. So when you look at these two numbers, this is the one having a few significant figures. So the final answer to have also few significant figures like one of the other two numbers. So which means our answer here will be written to two significant figures. That is right. Uh, however, before we begin writing, again we have to look at the biggest product. We need to start in this column to look at the biggest answer. If I get this times this, the answer will be this times this. Just, so, which column, which figures will give us the largest product? So, 
Uh, basically, when you look at this one, is the biggest in this column, this one is the smallest, this is the biggest in this column, this is the smallest. So which means the biggest times the biggest will give us the largest one's product. Which means I will start using, I uh, will start with this one here. It's the one I'm going to start with. So compare the one you get here and the one you get here. It is clear that this is big and this is big, they will bring us in a bigger answer. So we start with the bigger product or the largest answer when you multiply the two. So I'll do that. I have 11.6 times 7.3. But the rule is saying when you are multiplying two numbers, first you notice there are significant figures. This is having three, this is having two. The final answer to have two significant figures as I have demonstrated here. So this answer here, this is significant, this is significant, those are two already. But check on this one here, the third one. If the third one lies within this range of these numbers, is either a 5, a 6, or a 7, 8, or a 9. What we do as usual, we get one from there, we put it there. So I'll write it 85. That's what I have to write. You need to write it to two significant figures, but after having rounded off. Um, now, this one is written in how many significant figures do we can see? It is two significant figures. Now, we are not going again to talk about significant figures. It is ending with this first number in this column. The rest of the numbers, we shall talk about decimal places. We shall talk about decimal places. It means that the other answers to be written in this column, we shall use decimal places just directly from here. This is written to two significant figures but it is written to zero decimal what? decimal place. Which means if these other values which are going to obtain here are going to be written in to zero decimal place or without decimals within them. So this is what we are going to do. I'll have this times this. Then this one I'll write it as This one I'll write it as 69 after having rounded the door to zero decimal place. In this, in this case, I'm not talking about significant figures, I'm talking about the small points. Significant figure has to work only on the first one. And in the first one, also, we consider the biggest product when you are multiplying. Look at this. 10 times 5.8 I have 62 then this that is 10.5 times 5.4 I have 50, uh, 57 then look at this 10.2 times 4.8 I'm having uh, 49 then I have this 9.9 times 4.2 I'm having 42 so each is written in to zero decimal point like the first term which you obtain. Um, there's something, when you are multiplying, we first deal with the first number which gives us the largest product. So when you look at this times this, the answer, we are having 42. But when you look at this times this, we are having 85. So that's why I say that when you are multiplying with we look for the largest product. It's what we start with. 
and also we consider significant figures at which they should be written. Now, this idea when you are divide, when you are multiplying and even when you are dividing, the same rule works. Here we begin with the largest answer. Even here, when you are dividing two quantities, that is y is a quantity divided by x is also a quantity. We also start with the largest answer. With the largest answer. Now, here it is you to test this value and test this value here. When I get y out of x, and I also get here y out of x, where do I have the largest answer? So you test this and this, you check the largest, it's the one you write first. And also, we still observe the rule of uh, significant figures. So, let me test it aside here. For this one, I have 7.3 out of 11.6. Let me see the answer to, uh, I will get. 7.3 divided by 11.6. Then I have 0 0.6293. Ah, there are others continuing. Let me test this one also. Y divided by X. That is 4.2 out of 9.9. 4.2 divided by 9.9. I have 0 0.42442. .42 ah, it's continuing. So look at this one and this one. Where do we have the largest answer? This is the largest answer. When you compare this and this, this one is big. The answer here is bigger than this. So the rule is saying we start with the big answer. The big answer. Now what we are going to do, yeah. before we write this answer, we don't write it anyhow that I have now obtained the large answer. Let me just write it, you know? We need again to think of significant figures. This one here, is having two significant figures. This 7.3 is seven significant, a three significant, which means it is two significant figures. This one down here, one is significant, this one is also significant, this is also significant, which means this one for it is written to three significant what? figures. And the rule says we have to write this final answer to the few significant figures, like one of the two numbers being divided. So when you look at these two numbers, which one is having a few significant figures? Obviously, this one here, yeah. right? So if that is the case, this number should be rounded off to how many significant figures? Obviously, that is two. So I have 0 0.6. Then this one, these are two significant figures. But check this one here. It is lying in this set here. Therefore, we pick one and put it here, and then the, our final answer to be written will be 0 0.63. So, therefore, here I'm going to have my largest answer as 0 0.63. So, we don't just write it anyhow like in mathematics, but there are certain guidelines we always follow. And uh, now, this is written to, to two significant figures due to the reason I have mentioned. Now, when we are going to have other answers here from these other values, we again, we don't need to talk about significant figures this time around. Significant figures works on, the, on only one number. The rest of the numbers in the column, what works? It is this more places. All the numbers, other numbers we're going to obtain here should be written in two decimal places. Like for this number we have obtained, this one is having how many decimal points now in this case because what we determine these others. In this case, in terms of decimal places, this one is having how many? It is having two. Because after a decimal, how many, you can move how many uh, steps? It is this one and this. So this one, it means all the other numbers down should be written in two. two decimal places. So this is what I'm going to do exactly. So for multiplication and division of quantities, it is the same rule. I have skipped this column here, 
because I wanted to give you the similarities between this column and the other one. When we are multiplying two quantities, two measured quantities, or when we are dividing two measured quantities, the working is the same. But when we have such a column, remember this is just a one, is not a measured quantity. So this column should not be treated like this column, and it is where you always make a mistake. So make sure today you differentiate them. So let me obtain these other values first of all, then we can proceed. So here we are getting y out of x, so the next number is going to be 6.3 divided by 10.9. 6.3 divided by 10.9. So I have, I have 0 0.58. Next, I have this divided by this. 5.8 divided by 10.7 and 0.54 Next, I have this divided by this 5.4 divided by 10.5 I have 0 0.51 Next, I have 1 divided by x, that is 4.8 divided by 10.2. I have 0 0.447. Then the, the last one, um, 4.2 divided by 9.2. is 0 0.42 so that is how we obtain those other values in the column okay I remind you when we are multiplying we first write the biggest answer we first test this upper part and this lower part, and then we, the largest one we start with, even when we are dividing two quantities, is the same. Now, a special case is this column here. And this column, whenever, uh, whenever I meet one out of, say, x, or you, you are to meet this one out of y, or you are to meet one out of maybe sine of an angle, or you are to meet one out of x, y, as long as the fraction is one out of a quantity, one out of a quantity, one out of a quantity, one out of a quantity. You can look at this chain here. The rule is the same. What do we do? You can see that one is a constant and we call it a plot. It's a constant, it is not uh, a value obtained in the practical experiment. It is just a number, a constant given to you. But it is being divided by x, of which x it is an experimental value as you can see. Meaning that all the answers here will be determined by the value of x, not so? Yes. Without this column of x, which means we cannot have answers here. So what do we do? As long as it is 1 divided by a quantity, measure the quantity, you just come to this, to the column of this x here, which is divided. Come to the column of it and look at the largest number. Come to the column of x, this side, and choose the largest number. So, um, coming to this side, this column of x, I'm seeing that the largest number is 11.6, right? Is it okay? Now, if that is the case, this is what I'm going to start with. There is no any other 
a confusion here. It's a matter of coming, this one dividing as long as this one is the one. I'm not saying to ask here, here you have seen it, the rule we use. But as long as one is on the top is the one. Just come to this column and divide it, come to this column and choose the largest number. So it's the one you, you start with. So uh, to be brief, I'm going to have to start with this number here because already uh, this, divide, this one dividing is the largest in this side. I will not use this because it is the smallest. So I will use this one which is the biggest, right? So I'm going to have one, in other words, one out of 11.6 so is what I'm going to put uh, here in my kite and then I write my answer. Uh, a point to note, the number of significant figures to use here. When I'm recording this answer, they should be like, for this number I have used it to divide. You remember this is a, a plot, we don't even think about it. We don't think about its significance. No, we only think of the significant figures of this one dividing. Because this is a constant, it's not a measured one. So we don't even bother to think about it. Uh, it's a significant figures because some of you will confuse you say, hey, I'm dividing two numbers, but this one is one So which means it is having one significant? You'll be wrong. This is a constant Therefore don't consider it's a significant figures, right? Okay, so we are going to have our answer written that is 1 divided by 11.6 I have number because uh, someone will end up saying hey, but these ones are four significant figures you should differentiate between the small places and the significant figures uh, see, this is zero which is beginning which is to the left side is not significant this one also is not significant it's only eight a six and a two which are significant which means this number is returning to three significant figures remember that uh, you can do the same for the rest of the numbers. Now, the same rule works. After having obtained this, it means the rest of the numbers down one, we should talk about decimal places. And these decimal places, where shall we get them? From this number we have just written. Now, this one is having how many decimal places? There are four decimal places. Places. The rest of the numbers we are not going to talk about significant. Instead, you are going to write these answers to the same decimal points, like for this first number. Let me hope that one is clear. Right. So let us see how these other numbers written. So I'm going to have um, one divided by this.
you have got the similarities between this column when you are multiplying the two quantities and this column when you are dividing two quantities uh, they have the same rules but this one here it is quite unique the way you can see it is quite unique you look at the biggest number which will divide one among these these other values so when you look at these values of x which one is the, the bigger value of x that is going to divide this one so it is what it is the one you start with the orange and uh, in actual sense it will give you the smallest answer because when you get one divided by a bigger number uh, the answer which comes out first becomes too small as compared to the rest of the numbers so let me hope that one is very very clear so 